Hi everyone, I'm Cadet Emily Rowley, your Professional Development Training Officer, and this is Aircast. This week we will be discussing starting out the new semester in the new year with Cadet Shelley Lewis and Cadet Bridget Griffin. Hi. So what are your guys' jobs this semester? Uh, I'm an FCP Flight Commander, Bravo Flight. <laughs> I'm the Squadron Commander for Training Squadron 2, which is all of the 100 GMC. All right, I hope that you guys kill it this semester. Heck yeah. <laughs> First question, how have you guys been staying busy over the break? Mm. So I've been working at Skyline, I'm a server, you know, <laughs> serving hot dogs all day. Um, but I've also been catching up with friends and it's really interesting because I went out to breakfast one morning with just four friends that I, you know, made in high school and jazz band actually. And <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about band friends stay close. Yes, they do. It's <laughs> kind of weird. But uh, we're just talking about life in high school and it just makes you feel old because it yeah. seems like it was yesterday, but it was, you know, quite a long time ago now. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I started working for Juggle, which is actually an app that I'm trying out for the first time, and it's a babysitting app, hmm. which sounds really, really sketchy, <laughs> I know, <laughs> but it's it's actually a really trustworthy, really well-run organization, and That's cool. I've met this amazing family through the app, and they've set me up with other families, and it's been, it's been really fun to babysit kids of all ages. They're kind of exhausting, but... I've won every single Nerf War so far, so I'd, I'd say... What's your favorite age? I think anything above seven is is ideal for me, because <laughs> I can reason with them to an extent. Right. <laughs> but anything younger than seven, they, just, they, they don't really understand logic sometimes. So right. you say, I need you to put your coat on, <laughs> it's cold. And they're like, well, I don't want to wear my coat. <laughs> it's cold. You have to. <laughs> yeah, I have four younger siblings. They're all um, older now. The youngest is 13, but they are a handful for sure. And <laughs> I remember, like, living in the house and when I was, like, in high school and junior high, and they were just little brats sometimes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't imagine. I'm the youngest sibling in my family, so this babysitting has just made me really appreciate everything that my <laughs> older siblings had to go through. Yeah. For me, I've been just spending time with the family and spending time with those four younger siblings. <laughs> um, I actually like cleaned my sister's room for her because it was like a complete disaster. It took us like three days. Oh, <laughs> she still has to go through all her clothes. I think I showed you um, like a picture. Yeah, of you it, did. But it's crazy. Yeah, she's got a lot of work to do still. She's going to need help from my parents. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some ways that you guys have been recharging over break? Well, the holiday season, my family was cooks a lot. So, and it's, this year it's just been me and my mom, so it's been pretty quiet. My dad's around, but you know, cooking's not his thing. So mm -hmm. um, I just spent a lot of time making dishes dishes from scratch yeah so we made like uh green bean casserole and mm, smashed good. potatoes and stuff like that from scratch it was really good um but i've also gotten back into playing piano a lot this holiday season and i'm actually working on this piece it's really hard uh and Yay. i'm probably gonna say the name wrong it's called Sonetto del petrarca uh it's a list piece Ooh. and it's very challenging but it's gorgeous so. Oh, I can't wait for to hear you play it. <laughs> I know. It's <laughs> a long ways to go. But <laughs> well, I I also took time to rest and to be with my family as much as I could. I was fortunate enough to spend the holidays with my grandma, but that also meant you know certain quarantining before I was mm -hmm. able to go home. But it was so worth it, and I was so glad that we got to keep our Christmas tradition the same of having her there with us. And I've also taken up reading over break, Ooh. so I don't. I finished a, a book by Caesar Milan, who's this really popular dog trainer, and if you know anything about me, I love my dog, and... I love her too. <laughs> he goes into a lot of the, the psychology behind why we treat our dogs the way we do, and why That's you know, cool. everyone... I might have to borrow that. Yeah, I really recommend it. I loved it. And he even, he goes into a lot about leadership, which 
even though it's a dog book, it sounds kind of strange, but a lot of it did translate into Razi just with yeah. all of the leadership and self-confidence that he talks That's about. That's how you know it's a good book. Right. You can <laughs> translate it to your life. I've also been doing a little bit of reading. I've been reading Endurance by Scott Kelly. He's like the astronaut that spent a year in space. Yeah, that's amazing. And his brother was just elected as, um, I think it was a senator in like Arizona or New Mexico, one of those states out west. But um, yeah, he's he's an interesting voice to listen to. And I've also <laughs> been, been binge watching Community. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. It's like a sitcom about a study group at a community college. It's it's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> the premise is that there's this lawyer who faked his degree, and then he has to like go back to community college, and he wants to like cheat his way through. Mm-hmm. But um, he ends up like starting a study group, and they all become like really good friends. Cool. What are things that you miss most about? not being in a pandemic oh god (laughs) Um, well it's really changed our way of everyday life so i miss just being able to walk down mcmillan and seeing people literally everywhere Mm -hmm. or across campus and seeing students just coming and going to class i mean the everyday busyness of life that kind of vibe i I really miss that yeah definitely there has been a huge culture shift yeah it's kind of spooky now (laughs) There are a lot of things I miss. I think one of the biggest ones is just not having to think twice about hanging out with friends. So before the pandemic, you didn't have to worry about how big the crowd was going to be. You didn't have to worry about if you were going to be indoors or outdoors, where they were coming from. Like if they're going to be coming from out of town, then can you just drop everything and go see them? Mm Because they've been traveling through states. I think that's what I miss the most is just the flexibility of getting to see people when you want to. It's hard to sacrifice that, especially when you have a busy schedule. Right. For me, like, having to start, like, new jobs during this and meeting new people, I really miss, like, just being able to shake someone's hand and, like, I miss kind of just starting off a relation, professional relationship that way. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just, like, the little things that I really miss. But let's turn it on its head and (laughs) what are some new things that you've done because of the pandemic? One thing that I found that I, I have done since, you know, we've been confined in our homes Uh, It's kind of ironic, but I've reached out to talk to people that I haven't talked to in years. Uh, I have friends from two or three years ago, and it just, you know, we drifted our separate ways, and they went off and started started their life, and I'm down here, and I just reconnected to them and said, hey, what's new? How are you? Mm -hmm. And we've been in contact over the last several months. Yeah, I think really, like, just being able to normalize, like, talking virtually Mm -hmm. and not making it feel awkward that that you guys are doing it that way Mm -hmm. you know I feel like before it was kind of you might have felt guilty just reaching out virtually because you don't want to be one of those people that only communicates through your (laughs) devices easy way out right but like I think now we're being able to appreciate that this is a way we can communicate yeah absolutely yeah I was thinking something kind of similar too, where one of the things that's weird is just how much I now rely on technology to communicate with people I mean it's it's been a reliance for so long because of email and group yeah. me and text but now I I never had zoom on my laptop before yeah, COVID. I just, I, I didn't need it. Zoom, WebEx, I know, and now Teams. I use, now I use Zoom every week to talk to my sister who lives in Utah, and we'll <laughs> Zoom call awesome. her and we'll all eat dinner at the same time. I mean, Aww. not for her, because she's two hours <laughs> behind, but <laughs> we'll all just be able to hang out, and we Zoom call her for all of Thanksgiving and all of Christmas, and just being able to see people in a way that I never even would have thought about mm-hmm. before. Yeah, it's really kind of just opening our eyes a little bit, and just letting us kind of push the boundaries of technology of how we've used that used it in the past. Mm-hmm. What are things that you've learned coming out of 2020? <laughs> I'm sure that there's many. <laughs> yeah, uh, we've kind of been put into a situation like, you know, obviously we've never seen before. Right. But um, after being one of the very lucky few that got to go to field training this summer, mm-hmm. and Cadet Griffin, you also went to field training. I'm sorry if I'm taking this idea from oh. you. <laughs> But teamwork. Mm -hmm. I knew that teamwork was important. I mean, it's cliche. Everybody says teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. But until you really experience a situation in which 
you won't succeed without teamwork if you don't realize how critical it is. Mm -hmm. And it's critical in order to get the mission done, but it's also critical for individual success. So, you know, don't go thinking that you're going to succeed on your own in the Air Force because you're absolutely not. Right. You have to work as a team. Um, and another thing is that I learned this semester, you can't control everything. <laughs> so I'm a very perfectionist kind of a person. I like to have mm -hmm. uh, my... I can relate to that. Yeah, I like to be able to control the pieces <laughs> and where they go. But this past year has really taught me that it that just doesn't happen. You can't. Yeah. But you can control your reaction to mm -hmm. it. So That's very true. I like that a lot. I think for me it's... It's been a, a long learned lesson that's been in the process of settling in for a long time, but for leaving 2020, it's just not being afraid to make change in your life when you yeah. see that things aren't working. And now as 2020, the last several months of it, I had best roommate situation I've ever had where I was surrounded by <laughs> friends that felt like family <laughs> and I was able to put my best foot forward in my academics and ROTC and I felt like I was really taking care of myself physically, mentally, and emotionally, and then just having all of those pillars of my life feel so good at the end of 2020, even though the world was kind of in flames, yeah. <laughs> it really sunk in that when I'm taking care of myself and everything and fulfilling my needs socially as well as, you know, mentally with school, then it really makes a difference in yeah. how you feel at the end of the day. Yeah, that's some good news in <laughs> that news culture. Yeah, that could help. Um, yeah, for me, I think just being able to be on my own, living on my own, it's it was kind of really difficult for me mm -hmm. at first because my best friend moved out and then I got a new roommate, but she didn't really have to be on campus, so she would go home a lot. So it was definitely a struggle, like feeling like I didn't have anyone, mm -hmm. but um, being able to enjoy your free space and enjoy um, the just freedom you have when there's literally nobody watching you. Yeah. Um, and then just also like knowing when to reach out when you need it. Like the other day, I video chatted you because I just mm -hmm. really needed to talk to someone. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely something I've learned this this year. Do you guys have any resolutions for 2021? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I have all the like, I wanna you know, get a 4.0 and uh -huh, you know, do well. But um, I really wanna build some muscle. So Ooh, yes. yeah, and I've got the perfect weight trainer right here. Oh, <laughs> I've learned from the best. <laughs> so I plan on by the end of 2021, putting on Ooh, a little you, bit of muscle. I don't want to be like doing you know. some weight training. Count me in. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have weekly gym meetups or at least accountability. I'll text you at the end of the day and be like, did you get to the gym? Yeah. There you go. I yeah, definitely kind of need a partner starting out, mm -hmm. but yeah, we should really try to keep, keep each other accountable. Do you have any resolutions? I think for me, one of the biggest things is personally just setting realistic goals for myself. Yes. Because I feel like a lot of people fall into this trap where you have really, really ambitious goals at the beginning of the year, and then you lose the kind of kickstart adrenaline of mm -hmm. it, and then it falls into this baseline mundane everyday thing, and you lose the excitement. So I'm always one of those people, and so I'm trying to set my goals small and in mm -hmm. small time frames as well. Yeah. So I do. That's I fell, important when you're setting a goal for the entire year. Yeah, and I fell out of my gym routine when COVID started, and I miss, I miss going to the gym, and I miss having the body that I had, and feeling so strong. And I do want to get back into the gym, but I've lost that drive, honestly, of, yeah. of wanting to go. So just setting those small goals of that's really if smart. I don't go to the gym today, but I still do 100 push-ups or I still go on a run, that's <laughs> that's a win. I'll take the small victories for January. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't really like setting resolutions just because I know, like, it's going to be hard to not break that throughout the entire year. Right. And I don't like setting goals that I know I'm going to break. But um, I did come up with a resolution for the sake of this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that is to meditate more. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. I 
I could set a kind of goal for it, but I don't really want to because I don't want to feel guilty about not doing it. Yeah. But I would just like to do it more because it does really help me clear my mind and sort of detach myself from my negative emotions and thoughts and helps me understand them more. Mm -hmm. I kind of really like guided meditation because I can't just... It's, like, harder to really have, like, an effective meditation, like, just timing yourself if you, like, don't really know what you should be doing with Mm -hmm. your time. So I do like to just have those meditations where I don't have any guidance or anything, but also, like, having those guided meditations really helps me learn, like, how I should be meditating when I don't have them there. Yeah, that's really good. I think I should also probably look at that. <laughs> I, I suggest it to everyone because it, it does really help me clear my mind. Mm-hmm. I like to do it especially when I kind of find myself just like sitting down and thinking and not doing anything else and just dwelling mm-hmm. on my thoughts. Right. And it'd be so much more beneficial than just scrolling on your phone, which I'm so mm-hmm. guilty of doing. I do that too. But if I'm going to spend... 30 minutes on my phone at the very least if I spend 10 minutes meditating right that's something mm-hmm. really and it does it really helps helps distract you <laughs> <laughs> okay so what are some habits that you guys want to break starting out the new semester and the new year so this is something that is really unhealthy and I know that but I fret about how every situation can go wrong and Cadet Griffin can probably attest to this. She's Mm -hmm. my roommate. (laughs) And um, she's definitely one that I express my uh, drastic and or (laughs) world-ending thoughts to. Um, And there are nights even when I wake up and I just dwell on this stuff and it's ridiculous. And I know that it's ridiculous, so I have to stop the habit. (laughs) Somehow, maybe meditation. (laughs) Yeah, it'll be hard for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'd say just be patient with yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I mean, I just mentioned that I'm so guilty of scrolling on my phone. It's (laughs) it's the first thing I do in the morning. I hear my alarm go off, so I immediately roll over and touch my phone right away. So I almost want to get an alarm clock so that I'm not using my phone (laughs) because then I I will be on my phone for the first 30 minutes to an hour of my day. Mm -hmm. And I have, you know, so many hours awake throughout the day and I just spent a whole hour on my phone that, that didn't accomplish anything. And it also gives me a headache. Like, my body's telling me this isn't (laughs) even helpful at all. So one of my biggest goals for 2021 is to just not be on my phone as much throughout the day, but particularly first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always feel so guilty when I'm watching, like, the third hour of TV and my eyes are hurting. I'm like, just stop (laughs) watching it. (laughs) My body's even telling me to stop. Uh (laughs) Um, For me, I would like to try to stay more focused you know in terms of classes Mm -hmm. Um, over the summer I had my academic summer I had like 12 credit hours just all online and I really got into a habit of just turning on my class and getting on my phone doing the dishes making food doing my laundry just like anything but paying attention so I would really like to try to just stay more focused during my classes and trying to take engaging notes or something like that because I'm gonna have all online classes Mm -hmm. this semester again so I think it's gonna be really important to do Mm -hmm. that. It's really (laughs) easy to do too because you're just on a zoom call and if you don't have to have your camera on you're like oh well yeah clean my room at the same time. Right you're just in your home you're with your roommates and your dog you're not in a classroom (laughs) so you almost have to build that classroom for yourself right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that'll be hard but i think it's worth it. trying <laughs> yeah. what are ways you make sure that you hit the ground running at the beginning of each semester so this actually took me a, a few semesters to accomplish <laughs> <laughs> i <laughs> don't think i've done it very well. yeah yeah I know. <laughs> so last semester was really just the first time that it actually you know i felt ready and a couple of things that I did was that I wrote literally everything that I would need down. So I have sticky notes and I mean you can look in my room right now and see them on my whiteboard. They're just reminders of things that I need to do and things that I need to get and you know yeah. lists. 
Yes. And then I have my monthly calendar up on the wall for appointments and stuff. And then I have uh, a weekly planner. So then, you know, once I write everything down for the first, at least, you know, two or three weeks, and I, you have to accept that things are going to change. But right. once I have that base to go off of, I can feel relieved and like I'm ready to learn and start mm -hmm. the semester. That's so, good. Yeah. I'd like to say you stole that from somebody. Oh, probably you. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, I probably learned it from someone too. That is pretty much exactly what I was going to say. I love my planner. It's, me too. It's I, basically I a Bible too. for me. Like I put, I the first thing I do whenever I get all my syllabi is just put everything in my planner. <laughs> I've got every due date for the whole semester that the professor's given me, every project start date, and I I use my weekly planner for my weekly to dos. And I have different sections in the planner for like, this is just life things, like what <laughs> groceries I need to buy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then these are the assignments I need to get done. And especially this semester, I've learned that an old method I used of I'm just going to put everything I could get done, like everything that needs to get done, I'm going to put on this day. And if it doesn't all get done, it's fine. But it didn't feel fine at the end right. of the day. I was like, there are still eight boxes on this list that I didn't get done. So this past semester, I actually started managing the assignments a little bit and I would spread them out throughout the week so as soon as I finished what I had portioned out for that day I was done and I could take a break and I would move on mm -hmm. and I'd That's tackle really the next day stuff on the next day and if some that way if something had to get moved it never felt like I was constantly not achieving each mm -hmm. day's tasks yeah that's something I struggle with too I like to write everything that needs to be done down like when I have free right. time but I know that I'm not going to get to everything so I find myself scribbling it out and rewriting it mm -hmm. over and over again. And then that just feels so unfulfilling like you finish yeah, your day and your to-do list isn't even yeah, done. Yeah that and you can just fall into a pattern where it feels like okay well I'll just do it tomorrow. Right that's so true. Yeah this is going to be a hard semester for me I think because I have been off of ROTC for mm -hmm. a year. <laughs> um, <laughs> Making that co-op money. <laughs> yes, I really, really liked that. But uh, I am really excited to get back, so I'm going to use your guys' tips to make sure I don't <laughs> fall behind <laughs> before the semester's even started. We'll have to make sure we follow our own advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually got a free calendar from my um, last job and I hung it up in my kitchen Use it. and yeah, I I do the same thing though with the planner mm -hmm. I I am always writing out what I need to do and I like like color code and I'll like write things in different colors based on what day I want to do them on and mm -hmm. I'll like highlight things that I know I need to do this day mm -hmm. but um, it's easier to sort of manage that uh, those academic things for me just because I kind of put that first mm -hmm. but As the house <laughs> <laughs> the household things the grocery things you know and even spending time with friends those are those are things that I have a hard time managing so yeah. try to put that kind of deliberate attention on other aspects it's of a my skill life too. Yeah, yeah you have to develop it is there anything that you are worried about for this upcoming semester? <laughs> oh, yes, I'm there sure. are. <laughs> uh, one of the big things that's been on my mind the past couple weeks is that I'm worried about preparing the cadets in my flight for mm -hmm. field training this semester. With so many cadets being deferred last year, or last summer, yeah. and they're going to go to field training this summer, well, they've been through uh, FTP, you know, they're two times now yeah so and they've had an extra year to learn and memorize everything that they need to memorize and practice and stuff mm -hmm. so competition is going to be really tough yeah um, I'm a little worried about that myself yeah <laughs> and it's up to the flight commanders to really provide the tools and, and the support that they need to succeed and I just am kind of worried about making sure that they're ready yeah so. of course <laughs> of course you have those worries but I think you're gonna do a great job thank you <laughs> <laughs> I think for for me I'm always worried about managing my time just because this past semester I feel like I I did it so well it just worked out so well and I am worried that I won't be able to replicate it because I honestly don't know 
don't know how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to have such a good time. I enjoyed my classes mm-hmm. as an, as much as you can, and I got the work done. I don't know if it was the credit load or what my job was, or or what, but I'm gonna try and keep as much of that the same yeah. as possible because I really was able to. Sh- that's strike great. gold with how well it worked for me last semester and I just want to be able to do that again yeah that's awesome for me I am extremely worried about going through FTP but I'm just going to make sure I have my wingmen mm-hmm. and make sure that I'm staying on top of stuff mm-hmm. but that's easier said than done <laughs> and everybody has their own way of doing things so mm-hmm. don't just you know think that just because I say something, it's not how you should do it. Right. Um, you have to find your own way of what works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is going to be a little scary, but... Yeah, of course I think it's scary, but only because it's new. Yeah, I, th- I yeah. agree. I think that once I know more about my situation, mm-hmm. the fear kind of It'll fades away, away yeah. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are some things you guys are excited about for this upcoming semester? Well, of course, I'm excited to see how my uh, cadets adapt to this new environment that they're about to be uh, rudely thrown into. (laughs) Um, But I'm also excited to see how I adapt. And I know it's kind of weird and maybe a little narcissistic, but um, (laughs) (laughs) I'm a pretty laid back person. So that has to change this semester. And I'm going to you know, whenever I change my personality or I have to change my personality, at least, you know, outside, from an outside perspective. um, (laughs) I always end up doing something memorable. So (laughs) I hope it's a good memorable and not something that I look back later and cringe on. (laughs) Yeah, we all have those moments. It's unavoidable, but that's going to be fun for you, probably, Mm -hmm. being able to just grow yourself in different ways that you haven't had the opportunity to do so yet. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. I can't, that. I, don't I can't know. wait for Cadet Lewis to yell at me. It's, <laughs> no, we don't yell. We just use elevated tone. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> it's, the, it's the redhead. That's what I'm, I can't wait to see that come out. Oh, goodness. I think for me, I'm, I'm excited to be a squadron commander because as a flight commander, it was pretty easy to understand the distinction for me with the GMC because I had this expectation where I'm I'm an upperclassman now and I know I'm supposed to know what's going on and mm-hmm. and the people I'm in charge of are underclassmen and it was a very hard line of knowing knowing that you're in charge kind of yeah. so the line was drawn for you and now as a squadron commander I'm in charge of flight commanders and it doesn't feel like as hard of a line that's drawn for me because outside of ROTC, they're all my peers and my friends. Yes. And being able to draw that line myself of where I'm going to be the the person that's in charge and, and where I'm going to be more receptive and, and treat it like a team and know mm-hmm. when it needs to be a team dynamic and when it needs to be a supervisor subordinate dynamic is going to be something I'm interested to try it out <laughs> yeah and you you like I said about Cadet Lewis you also have a new opportunity to mm-hmm. grow your leadership skills and right. I'm excited to see that <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> um me I'm honestly really excited to get back <laughs> this is gonna sound stupid but I'm excited to get back to school and get back to ROTC after um being off for Mm -hmm. the past four months on co-op and for the past year Mm -hmm. for ROTC but it will be interesting to see you know how I fall on the learning curve because I I definitely am a little bit out of touch I haven't really done a whole lot of drill and I'm a little rusty on my warrior knowledge so Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to work really hard on that but I'm excited to you know be back with everyone and just you know get to just (laughs) work hard it's so it feels so fulfilling to know that you put all of your effort into something yeah and at, at the same time even though you might be a little rusty on 
the graded portion of things, you get to come back with fresh eyes, which mm-hmm. is something that the the majority of the wing doesn't get. They have to hit the ground running every semester right. back to back, and mm-hmm. that can get a little burnt out and kind yes. of tiresome. And now that you've had a whole year away, you get to come back with all these new ideas and a fresh perspective, like mm-hmm. this podcast. When, does, <laughs> when did we do a podcast before? I don't think anyone's tried that. No. So you get yeah. to come back with all your brand new ideas of yeah. how to make things better and more efficient and that's mm-hmm. going to be super cool too yeah that is a that is a cool way of looking at it mm-hmm. okay so last question for you guys what is your favorite quote and can you please explain it to me okay so my favorite quote so many of our dreams at first seem impossible then they seem improbable and then when we summon the will they become inevitable by Christopher Reeve, which of course, you know, is the original Superman. So <laughs> he's cool already. But I actually found this quote in a time when I was kind of down in the dumps for a while, you know, the bad habit of thinking the worst case scenario of mm-hmm. my future and I want to be a pilot and, you know, it's really competitive. So, yeah. But I was planning out the next week in my agenda, and up in the right hand corner each week, there is a new quote. And I read it once, and then I read it twice, and something just kind of clicked. Mm -hmm. So, so many of our dreams at first seem impossible. When I first started the program, being a pilot wasn't even on the table because I didn't meet the height requirements. So Mm -hmm. I wasn't even thinking, you know, it was an, an, an opportunity or, you know, a choice for me. But then the Air Force changed its policies and it became possible. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I want to be a pilot. <laughs> and of course, in order to be a pilot, you have to get a rated EA. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to get a rated EA because you know my GPA is kind of low and there's a whole lot of factors that go into it. But then I got a rated EA, so it seemed you know, possible again. Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't yet discovered the last part of the quote of uh, they become inevitable, mm-hmm. but We'll find out about that one. Yeah, I really like how you are applying it to your own life. Yeah, give me hope, honestly. (laughs) Uh, For me, my favorite quote is by Alan Watts, who's a philosopher. And he says, you can't live at all unless you can live fully now. And a friend introduced me to his work, actually, several years ago. But I kind of reconnected with it recently because I realized that Every day I was waking up and doing the same thing, and I was doing homework simply to get good grades. I was getting good grades simply so that I could get a good GPA, so that I could get a degree, so that I could get out of college and get a good job, so that I could, with my good job, make good money, so that I could send, Mm -hmm. prepare for a future family or buy a good home, and it was all just so then, or so that, and I was never enjoying I was never enjoying getting the good grade because that wasn't a good enough accomplishment or I wasn't enjoying the little victories. So just failing to realize what's going on around you makes you miss out on so much. And so I'm really trying to live in the present and kind of (laughs) struggling a little bit with what Cadet Lewis was struggling with of not stressing too much about the future because I can't control the future. I can control what's around me right now which can potentially set me up for success in the future. But just worrying about what I can right now and really more important for me is enjoying what's around me right now. Mm, Yeah, I really like that. That's a good lesson. I'm trying. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't fully learned it yet. (laughs) Well, thank you, Cadet Lewis and Cadet Griffin, for talking with me today about starting out the new semester (laughs) and the new year. And I hope that 2021 goes well for you guys. Thank you, Kenneth Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have any questions about anything we've said or you guys just want to talk about how we can hit the ground running with the new semester and the new year, then please reach out. I know that we would all be happy to continue the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Okay, Air Cats, well, remember to fly, fight, and win, and I will catch you next time on Aircast. <laughs>